His was a comedic star that burned brightly, but was snuffed out too soon. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Chris Farley SNL moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're ranking the most memorable, hilarious, or otherwise noteworthy moments from Chris Farley's tenure on Saturday Night Live. We won't be touching any of his film or other TV work, but rather focusing on the sketch comedy work that made him a star. For his other TV and film work, check out our video of the top 10 Chris Farley moments. Number 10. Rudy Giuliani's Son Rudy Giuliani's 1994 mayoral inauguration speech made nationwide news thanks to the upstaging antics of his young son. But that was nothing compared to the incident's treatment on SNL. My dad, mayor! <laughs> Chris Farley's on-screen chemistry with Kevin Nealon is at the forefront here, as Chris makes faces and mugs for the camera. Yeah! Oh yeah! I love my mayor! <laughs> Nealon can barely keep it together while trying to play straight man to the irrepressible Farley, and their combined live from New York callout for this cold open really sets the stage for a sentiment we'll be returning to often during this list that Chris Farley was truly loved by his castmates. Monday, we can all say, Live from New York, it's Saturday night! Number nine, Gap Girls. Adam Sandler, David Spade, and Chris Farley were a team on and off the screen, so naturally they worked well together on many a famous SNL skit. Can't believe how slow it is in here today. We've got so many lucky loads. The trio was particularly funny in this recurring sketch that saw them playing teenage girls working at Gap. It's how dedicated Chris and the boys were to their characters that saves the sketch from the obvious pitfalls. When I was making out with her, it, it was weird, but I didn't hate it. Gross! Get away! Oh my god. The accents, physical mannerisms, and hair flips lifted the Gap girls from a pretty basic premise into a sketch that almost always brought the house down. Number 8. Lunch Lady Land We all know that Adam Sandler is a master of musical comedy, but not even he could hold a candle to the force of nature that was Chris Farley. Well, I wear this net on my head Cause my red hair is falling out I wear these brown orthopedic shoes Cause I got a bad case of the gout here, Sandler's Lunch Lady Land receives the pantomime treatment from Chris as the titular school chef, as other cast members dance around as angry pieces of food. Farley's facial expressions and enthusiastic dancing are to die for, so much so that Sandler can barely hold back his laughter. Lunch Lady Land may have already been a funny song, but it took Chris Farley's hilarious performance to make it iconic. <laughs> we got six kids and we're doing just fine. Number seven, Schiller Vision Hidden Camera. Sometimes it's what we don't expect that really gets us rolling. You're drinking Colombian decaf coffee crystals. That was certainly the case when it came to the SNL sketch Schiller Vision Hidden Camera, where Chris Farley made it a point to go off the rails with his performance. You no good damn The sketch is a parody of the old coffee commercials where a company would switch an average person's cup of joe with their brand. Only Farley's character does not take this deception very well. flies off the handle when served Colombian decaffeinated coffee crystals, cursing and overreacting in a way that goes against the grain of the OG commercials, and Chris's own easygoing nature. Number 6. The Chris Farley Show We can actually imagine kind of loving a real interview program featuring this fictionalized version of Farley. Songwriter ever. <laughs> ah, that sounds stupid! God, an idiot. In this sketch, Chris plays a well-intentioned and passionate interviewer who's just a bit too starstruck by his guest, the Beatles' Paul McCartney. Remember when you went to Japan and, uh, and at the airport they arrested you because you had some pot and made all the papers and everything? Well, to be honest, Chris, I'd kind of like to forget all that. <laughs> 
His enthusiasm is there, as well as his nerves, but he just can't seem to get his line of questioning right. That is, until a very sincere question about the Beatles' Abbey Road album gets him a short but very sweet answer from Paul. I find the more you give, the more you get. <sighs> Seeing Chris's happy reaction to one of his heroes gets us every time. Number 5. Bill Swirsky's Superfans this recurring SNL sketch may be something of an ensemble piece, but Chris Farley's character, Todd, had a number of moments that fans still remember fondly. Da bears. Da da bears. Bears. Some may be a little morbid, but then again, the superfans were a bunch of diehard Chicago sports fans whose diet consisted primarily of beer, cheese, and cured meats. Coach Dicka had his mind on more important things. There was a war end, my friend. That's right, our boys were overseas. Yeah. Todd would choke on pork chops, have multiple heart attacks, play his own wife in drag, and overall just make it difficult for anyone sharing the superfans' table to outshine him. <laughs> he always stole the scene. You gotta remember to chew those pork chops, buddy. <laughs> Number four, Schmidt's Gay Beer. While we've already mentioned another SNL parody of popular commercials, their Schmidt's gay satire hits the funny bone on a whole other level. You two look like you need to get wet. Farley and Adam Sandler shoot this video clip as typical single bros, house-sitting and planning a wild beer bash. This beer commercial is a little different, however, as instead of bikini-clad babes, the boys are going gaga for Schmidt's gay, the beer choice for buff beefcakes. If you've got a big thirst and you're gay, reach for a cold, tall bottle of Schmidt's gay. Seeing the pair go through all of the typical motions you'd see in an 80s or 90s beer ad, while completely subverting expectations is hilarious, while its satirical take on the ad industry still resonates today. Number three. Japanese Game Show. There have been plenty of comedy shows that have tackled the wild world of Japanese game shows, but this episode from 1994 was early to the party, and in a great way. I don't know, I, I, I'm sorry. Does anybody here speak English? Do you guys speak English? Farley is a stranger in a strange land as the only person on a Japanese game show who doesn't speak Japanese. Hachi? Juhachi? I... Tadashi! 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 This could have been a one-joke sketch, but it gets darker when the other contestants have to pay a horrible price for their wrong answers. Excuse me, I won. What the heck are you doing here? Hey. Chris's character somehow gets to the final round through dumb luck, only to find himself tied up and electrocuted while still insisting that it's all a big mistake. <laughs> Number 2. Chippendale's Audition even people who aren't avid SNL fans are still familiar with this iconic skit. It's not so much the setup of a Chippendales audition that makes this scene with Chris Farley and Patrick Swayze so funny, but rather the execution. The judges and cast take the competition between Swayze and Farley so seriously, and the performances are so deadpan, that Swayze seems sincerely relieved when he gets the job over Chris who certainly has enthusiasm on his side. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I just never wanted so much in my life. You know, and now that I got it, I just can't deal with it. Oh, that's okay, Adrian. We understand. <laughs> if for some reason you've never watched this classic SNL moment, do yourself a favor and check it out now. No, Barney. No, no. No, Barney, we've, we've made our decision. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Care for Indian food? Try Bombay Garden. It's cozy and expensive, and the tandoori chicken's the best in town. It's as if I am in the room alone. El Nino. For those of you who don't habla espanol, El Nino is Spanish for the Nino. <laughs> Maybe I'm not a GQ model or a hunk. Maybe I'm not handsome or even presentable. <laughs> I'm not pleasing to the eye. For the love of all things holy, <laughs> let the boy rub the dog's belly. He said he likes to do it, and you know damn well the dog likes it too. Number one, Matt Foley. He lives in a van down by the river. I am 35 years old. 
I am divorced, and I live in a van down by the river. This may have been motivational speaker Matt Foley's signature line, but it wasn't the only thing that made this Chris Farley sketch such a success. Brian, from what I've heard, you're using your paper not for writing, but for rolling doobies. Chris's boisterous movements, his intense knack for physical comedy, and the reactions of his co-stars all made his Matt Foley segments some of the funniest in SNL's run. And I wish to dear God that I was living in a van down by the river. Thanks to Farley's truly one-of-a-kind talent, even his castmates struggle to keep a straight face. But that just makes the skit even funnier. His work here is still making us laugh so many years later. That's funny! <laughs> well, get over it! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.